a worthy destination. The stories of people achieving unusual success despite all manner of handicaps never fail to capture our attention. They are inspirational to be sure, but if we study them closely, we find they are much more than that. The boy whose legs were terribly burned and who was told he'd be lucky to walk again becomes a champion track star. The woman who was blind and deaf from early childhood becomes one of the most inspirational figures of the country, and the poor children who rise to fame and fortune have nearly become commonplace. In this age of unprecedented immigration, we read and see on television examples of people who arrive in this country without any money and without knowing a word of English, and who, within a surprisingly short time, have become wonderfully successful. In fact, the typical Korean family that has immigrated to the United States during the past 20 years has a higher average income than the average American family that was born and went to school here. How does that happen? Freedom, personal liberty, is the most precious thing on earth. It's also one of the rarest, hence great value. People who manage to get to America despite mountainous problems and miles of red tape often find themselves free for the first time in their lives. It's a joyous, wonderful experience for them. And in this newfound freedom, they set to work to find a place for themselves. They go to work serving their new country and its people. Time means nothing to them. But being free to pursue their own ends in the richest, freest country on the planet is everything. They'll go to work and they work hard. Their work is excellent, first class, as good as they can do it, and it's priced fairly. You don't see them marching, demanding higher pay or shorter hours. All they want is the opportunity, and once it's theirs, they make the most of it. In New York City, a Korean family managed to buy a small convenience grocery store in Midtown Manhattan. The first thing they did was clean it. it says the store sparkled with cleanliness, and then they stocked it with all the grocery items they felt the people in their area wanted. They were open early in the morning, they stayed open late at night. They never failed to give a friendly greeting to their customers. Naturally, they become wonderfully successful. They were open seven days a week. One day, customers coming to the store found it closed. On the door was a note explaining the reason why. It read, We have gone to Yale University to watch our son graduate. That's an American story, the true story of people who found joy and freedom and in the opportunity to serve their fellow men and who made the most of it. What drives these people with such vast handicaps, such as not knowing the language, not knowing the right people, not having any money? Or the boy with burned legs who become the champion runner? Or a Helen Keller, blind and deaf from early childhood? What in the world is the answer? The answer is, if fully understood, will bring you and me anything and everything we truly want. And it's deceptively simple. We touched on it in our last message. Perhaps it's too simple. The people we have talked to about here and thousands currently doing the same thing all over the country possess something the average American doesn't have. They have goals. They have a burning desire to succeed despite all handicaps. They know exactly what they want. They think about it every day of their lives. It gets them up in the morning and it keeps them giving their way, very best way, all day long. And it's the last thing they think about before dropping off to sleep at night. They have a vision of exactly what they want to do and that vision carries them over every obstacle. This vision, this dream, this goal, invisible to all the world except the person holding it, is responsible perhaps every great advance and achievement of humankind. It's the underlying motive for just about everything we see about us, everything worthwhile that has been achieved by men and women, or it's a dream come true, a goal reached. It's been said that what the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. 
It's the fine building where before there was an empty lot or an ancient eyesore. It's the bridge spanning the bay. It's landing on the moon. It's that little convenience store in Midtown Manhattan. It's a lovely home on a tree-shaded street and the young person accepting the diploma. It's the newborn baby in its mother's arms. It's a low golf handicap and a position rich in the world of business. It's a certain income attained or amount of money invested. What the mind can conceive or believe, it can achieve. We become what we think about. When we're possessed by an exciting goal, we reach it. That's why it's been said, be choosy, therefore, what you set your heart upon. For you, for if you want it strongly enough, you'll get amen to that. It's been said that Americans can have anything they want. The trouble is that they don't know what they want. Oh, they want little things. They want a new car. They want to get it. They want a new home, and they get it. The system never fails to work for them. But they don't seem to understand that it is a system and that if it will work for a new refrigerator or a new car, it will work just as well for anything else they want very much.